What, where are we now? Wither the empire. We did hear a civil, silver lining here in a certain sense. Chalmers Johnson, who's been saying uh, for some time that the empire is irreversible, uh, former CIA guy, by the way, also, <clears throat> uh, that there's just no chance, no, no chance. It's too deeply embedded in this country to change. Um, did allow, in front of an audience, I heard one, one possibility for the empire to, to collapse, well, to be transcended. And that was the economic collapse that you were describing. But that's question is when and what comes before it. What will come in the next year or two? Well, here's a silver lining, the only one I can think of, and very important for us this week and this month. And that is that the BBC might be wrong in saying last Wednesday on the BBC what the Daily Telegraph in Britain also said, that the British government officials have been told that President Obama had made his decision on McChrystal's um, request, contrary to what the Pentagon and the White House are saying today, still today. No decision has been made. We assure you the BBC is wrong. Um, Telegraph is wrong. He's made no decision. Their story is that the decision has been made according to what has been told to British officials, and that the decision is to send McChrystal 45,000 troops. All he asked for? No, it's splitting the difference. It turns out that what he was ranging as a range of options was not uh, bounded by 40,000, as we heard for months, or a couple of months since August. And it was not 60,000, as we began to hear maybe 10 days ago. And then it's not, well, it is more than 60,000. The upper figure he's been talking about, according to many leaks now, is 80,000. So 40,000 split the difference. Compromise, a half measure, as McCain would put it. McCain has said, what I most fear is half measures. So another 45,000, but that is a minimum. Uh, according to the leaks, McChrystal has said, yes, um, 45,000 or 40,000 would be an acceptable minimal number to send over there. As somebody who, I read McChrystal's uh, assessment of the situation, which was leaked to the Post, by all agreement, uh, as a form of putting pressure on Obama to give him what he was asking for. And it has a lot of candor in it about the this present situation. Matter of fact, it's a warning uh, of how, if we don't send the minimum or more that he's asking, and the minimum, I repeat, is in the 40,000 range, uh, there will be short-run uh, failure in Afghanistan. So it's, there is a good deal of candor in it. Uh, probably about the corruption of the government that needs to change, the inefficiency, the incompetence, uh, the lack of, uh, of motivation of the troops, the Afghan troops and so forth, and that's the need. And it's all seemed very familiar to me. And I felt I could have written this. In fact, I did write it. I wrote the Crystal McChrystal assessment 30 years ago with different place names. And I went back to uh, the reports I'd given in the embassy in 1966, 43 years ago, and reread it to see if my memory was right. And yes, McChrystal could have signed that report, just changed the place names as to what needed to be done, what the problems were, uh, the description of the, the issue of pacification, of counterinsurgency. I uh, trained on counterinsurgency. That was my imperial role. I didn't see it in those terms. Uh, in, in Vietnam, and I wrote the doctrine for counterinsurgency at the embassy in 1966. And uh, I was training under such people as General Ed Lansdale, formerly CIA, he was credited with counterinsurgency campaign in the Philippines and uh, under Ziam and so forth, and Americans like John Paul Van, Frank Scott, and Ev Baumgartner, names you wouldn't know, but people in the counterinsurgency field would know. Evidently, there are people, such as Dick Holbrook, who was a young uh, political officer in the embassy when I was there, very well-traveled in Vietnam, very uh, spoke Vietnamese, uh, one of the group that I worked with that we thought of as the good guys, who knew that what Westmoreland was doing was doomed, was hopeless, 
uh, counterproductive and so forth, but that there was a better way, the counterinsurgency way. I came to realize that that would not have worked at all in Vietnam, that there was no way to make a success of it, even if it had been adopted, which it wasn't. My perception is that Holbrook, who is now one of the hawks, along with Hillary Clinton, for what the civilian hawks, for what McChrystal is calling for, I have to infer that Dick Holbrook came away from that conflict with the lesson that the war, after all, could have been won if we'd done it right, if we'd done it the way us good guys wanted, Phil Werbisky and Frank Scott and John Paul Van and so forth, and Ed Lansdale, which is totally wrong. It isn't that the, no lessons have been learned. I'm afraid that some terribly wrong lessons have been learned. I would put against that, does that mean that counterinsurgency as described could never work? Uh, it's totally useless and apparently the army has adopted the theory uh, on in wholesale. That's their new way. They are determined to show that wars like Vietnam and Afghanistan with all its differences is very, very, very like Vietnam. I think of it as Vietnamistan. And their current position unfortunately seems to be such wars can be won by us and should be in many parts of the world. The army is not impotent and incompetent to do this. We will re revamp ourselves and we will prove able to win this. I'd, it's hard to think of some other motivation they have. The pipeline motivation it's hard to think of as being uh, central in the minds of uh, uh, some of the, of the generals. So what is their motivation? Hard to say. But in any case, they do seem to be pressing this idea. What does that doctrine, which I know very well and I've followed its evolution over the years, call for in the way of resources uh, when McChrystal keeps saying that the war has been under-resourced? What would be adequate resources for? We've heard uh, 10,000 more troops is not enough, 20,000 is not enough, 40,000 is a minimum, and 80,000 uh, is uh, less risk. Actually, that's the way he describes it, apparently, in the report we haven't seen yet. Forty to 45,000 is moderate risk policy. 80,000 is a lower risk, not low, lower risk policy. Uh, what's the chance that McChrystal and Admiral Mullen, his superior, and General Petraeus, his superior, what's the chance that they believe, any of them, that 80,000 is enough. Zero. There's no chance of that. I am certain that the president has seen figures very much higher, that they have not kept them from President Obama, and indeed that what's slowing him up to a degree that's described as making the military impatient and, unwor and, and worried about this dithering that he's doing, and has the, caused the Republicans to lose confidence, the confidence they had has gone down uh, in, in the president. Uh, I think he's seen the sticker shock on this, and the figures, I feel confident that he's been seeing, are figures not just for American troops, but for American plus Afghan troops. And those figures were leaked by Andrea Mitchell of NBC at 500,000. 600,000, 800,000. Where does that come from? Petraeus' own manual, which I read, which he's supposed to have written, he didn't actually write it, but he had it written under him for counterinsurgency, talks about 20 to 25 uh, troops for every thousand population in the population you're dealing with. That works out to over 600,000 troops for Afghanistan. Now the theory, of course, is that some 400,000 of those will be Afghan uh, troops. Uh, the Russians, by the way, had 340,000 Afghan troops working for them, and you may have noticed they didn't win. They also had 118,000 or possibly more, Greg is telling me, uh, but I think about 118,000 at any one time, Soviet troops wasn't enough, right? Obviously. So it's supposed to be 100,000 US plus 400,000 Afghani. That ain't gonna happen. You're not gonna get the Afghan troops. They aren't gonna fight when you do get them. And there's a reason for that I'll come to in a moment, which we can, could learn from Vietnam and others. Uh, the job will not be done by our Afghan troops that we're training, supporting, supplying, and so forth. <clears throat> On the other hand, we don't have 500,000 troops, and we won't have U.S. troops, and we won't have 
300,000 to send over without a draft. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we're doomed to half measures as before in McCain's terms. It means that the military never get what they feel is necessary from the public. Uh, but it, it does also mean that we will send as many as we can. And what the public has not been told, and I'm saying my, this is my speculation, it's very informed speculation. And my informed speculation is that if, if Obama goes this route of giving the military uh, the strategy they want, the counterinsurgency they want, the number of troops that we will be sending is everything we can find. Every troop that comes out of Iraq, if we ever do release, reduce troops in Iraq, maybe eventually, probably we will. So uh, not, not very soon, not, not through next spring probably. But as troops come out of Iraq uh, to some degree, and they will not all come out, but the 100,000 maybe that do come out or less will go to Afghanistan after a brief visit. That gives us 200,000 there. And troops from Japan, Korea, Europe, wherever we can scrape them together. And of course the volunteer force, which hopefully if the recession and depression goes on long enough, the volunteer force will stay as healthy as it is right now. Their recruiting is now at the highest level since 1973 in terms of their quotas. Uh, so we'll, we're sending a lot over. Maybe this won't happen. He has delayed. Uh, Obama has delayed on this point. Uh, there is opposition to it, including among civilians. Even Rahm Emanuel, uh, the first realistic good thing I've heard about Rahm Emanuel, and that's no joke, <laughs> is that he's opposing this. Uh, and uh, apparently James L. Jones, the Marine General, who's the National Security Advisor, is advising. Well, and of course, we've heard that Biden was opposing it. Now, all that's, that's pretty good. It means they have their, their feet on the ground, and there are civilian opponents to this. Um, my guess is that Obama understands everything, all of their reservations about this, and knows just how hopeless this is, knows. My guess would be that Obama understands perfectly well what I would have thought even the Army knew by this time, but they have apparently hypnotized themselves, knows that there is no victory ahead for us in Afghanistan if we put a million troops over there. We might quiet the place down while they're there to a considerable extent, and when we leave, it will be not better than if they had never been there. Not better. And certainly that 80,000, 100,000, 200,000 troops will bring no kind of success whatever.